Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the FWEX series. So on today's episode, I am just going to continue from the topsoil strip episode. And on today's one, I'm going to show you what is it that the topsoil strip drawing has to contain and more or less how it's supposed to look like. So as soon as you have cleared and grabbed your um, topsoil strip, depending on the millimeters that we are stripping, you are supposed to give the contractor setting out points so that the contractor knows the area that he's supposed to clear and grab. So um, normally it, it would be the whole site. <laughs> so uh, as soon as um, you are ready to do your topsoil strip, what happens is that you have to give your contractor setting out points. So you come under the home tab, under points, and you click on it. And this um, will come out when you do the drop down. This is what will appear. Then you say point creation tools. You click on the point creation tools and it says create points. So um, you drop down on the first command because we want to create our points manually. You click on manually. As soon as you've done that, please just make sure that your snap, uh, your object snap cursor is on. And because we want to make sure that we are snapping exactly at the corners that we want to set out. So as soon as that is on, you just right click. It says enter a point number. So I'm not going to give my number uh, point numbers a number at the moment. I'm just going to snap where I want the contractor to do his clear and grab. So I'm going to just be snapping and saying enter, snap, enter, snap, enter, and so forth. So um, depending on the shape of your fence, you might find that at every change in direction. So if this was going um, northeasterly or north direction or whatever, you, you, you had to go and snap where it would have been changing in direction. As soon as you have snapped all your change in direction corners, we can close create points. You'll see that you have a point at every corner. If you click on this point, um, it has a point number. It has a name. The attribute says it has a name. It has a point number and it has a raw description. It has a style and also point label style. So if you right click and go under point group properties, you'll see that the point style at the moment is benchmark. And the point label style is description. So it was taking point number because it was asking us to put in the point number you see. So point number is the one that this point is recognized by. But as soon as you want to change this point number and maybe make it a description or give it a name, you just come under the name tab. Let's say we want to call it m1 for example let me make them capital letters bm1 that's the name right and if we want to make this the name bm1 and let's say maybe also the raw description we want to call it tp1 for example so as soon as you've done that if you go back to your home tab and go under the annotate tab you see there is one that calls it's called add table if you drop it down it says add point table if we click on add point table we have description we have latitude and longitude we have name and we also have point number so all that i was just telling you about now it it, it, it depends on whether your points are recognized in description or they are recognized in the name by their name or they are recognized by their point number and also, if you see this RSA, YX for town planning, for breach bearings, all of those are now dependent on what the survey uh, quadrant was. And I think it has to be a, 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 a tutorial on its own because sometimes civil 3D um, swap, you, sometimes you have to swap the X and the Y around depending on which quadrant you are working on and what survey da data you received and all of that. But for now, I just want to show you guys how to set out. So let's say you want to use description. For example, you just want to use description RSA XY. 
so your 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 y x it's your just your easting and nothing but the moment it has a z it means you are also willing to give him an elevation that also is good because you want to show him that you are stripping off 600 mils or you are stripping off 150 mils so we can use this one that says description rsa um yxc and it asks you layer you can just put it on any layer it asks you um the point group that you want to use i'm just gonna say all points because currently i only have this po four points on this drawing and i say okay and this is what comes out so it means at the moment the only description that i gave a name it's point this um number um 1111 and if you go back to say at table and say at point table and i use the point number let's say i use the point number and again, I say all points, you'll see that triple 11 will come and all the other points. So they are recognized by their number because when I was putting them on, it was asking me to put their point number. And if I want to put on their description, same thing, you come under row description, you just say TP2 and TP3 and so forth. So um, you can use the name you can use the point number or you can use the description it's all up to you the tables will be the same the information on the table will be the same so it's all up to you which one you want to use how you want your points like to be recognized for example if you're going to use the point number already point numbers are there and you're going to use this number so the contractor will know that oh which point is this and he can see it on the layout but if you want to use the description you must just come back under your point group properties you right click and here where it says point label style you go and you say description just want the description only yes and then you'll see that it will now change to tp1 tp2 because i haven't named the other two it won't show them but you can easily come and give it a name and call it tp3 and so forth so this is when you want to use the description and if you want to use the name it's the same thing you just right you just click on the point you right click and say point group properties and then under the point label style you change it to name so we want it to be known by its name you can see that it has now changed to bm1 that's and now it means even if you do it by name you have to do a table now that has the name um yx with the name so um, basically that's how you choose which table you want to use and how you want to do your setting out and let's say you want to edit this table you come under edit table style you will see this is what will appear and let's say you don't want it to be just call them points you want to say uh clear and grab uh setting out coordinates you just click on that this will appear and you say clear and grab points for example you say okay and then if you want to change this description to something else if you double click on it the, it, it allows you to come in here let's say you don't want to use romans uh, for example you want to use Arial. so this is where you also change the text style the text color um, and all of that you can also change it here and then yeah if you want to add let's say you want to add something else you just click on this um, um add button and then you come here and you can give it a name um let's say you call it a pack i don't know something whatever information that probably you wanted to add you come you add it there and under that column value you just double click on it and here it, it it has a drop down where you yeah whatever let's say maybe you wanted to give a survey point or convergence or whatever scale factor or whatever and whatever that you wanted to give it you, as soon as you've selected it you, you click on this arrow and then it appears on the other side and then you say okay then it will appear there you say apply and okay then your table will now have whatever column that you want to, extra column that you wanted to add and yeah i think um on the points part i have done due diligence oh or let's say the 
there's a lot of points that you have to change their name and you don't want to go clicking on each one of them and coming and changing them here on the properties tab you can just go under your point groups all points so you'll see that they will appear here you will just enlarge it they will appear here underneath you can easily just come and double like type here what you want each point to be for example you want this one to be tp4 maybe the next one to be tp5 and so forth you can easily come and type everything here under the um, tool space tab and then they will appear so at the moment i'm gonna use the description one go to point group properties and i want to use description just description you say okay yeah, so you would have given the um, the contractor setting out points and then under, so this is what we call the model space and under like the layout one is what we call the paper space. So in your paper space, that's where you do your drawings. So the client normally is the one to send his title block um, if he prefers that he wants you guys to use his title block or the company will have their own sets of title block that are standardized that um, they are uniform all throughout the, the company. And then as soon as you guys have decided which paper size you're going to use, you just come here where it says layout, you right click and you say page setup manager. This is where you, um, you change your size of the page. If you come under modify, you'll see that paper size, we have A1, A3, A2, A0. So let's say for this project, we want to say, when I use A0, you just click on A0 and say, okay. So let's say we want to use A0 and there is now our page. And then as soon as you have this, you can come, you, you can cut, just come straight to your command tab and type here viewport. So if you click on your viewport, it, it has um, a single viewport, two which are vertical. But in our case, we're going to only use one single viewport. You say OK, and then it will ask you your, to specify your first corner. And then you put your viewport, let's say, there. And as soon as you, because you haven't set a scale on your viewport, so everything will come out like this. You can just zoom in and say regen, regen. And as soon as you have regenerated, you come here under your scale of the selected viewport. Um, I'll try one in 500 and see how it looks like. That looks better, but I think I can even go one in 250. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna use one in 250 scale. So after you have put on your viewport, you have to use uh, a viewport scale. And um, you put a viewport scale and your drawing will appear in your viewport. It has all the setting outs that you wanted to show the contractor where they are. Uh, because this is a clear and grab drawing, I don't think you even need the survey data inside the drawing. So we're just going to put it on your display just so that this, the points that we want um, the contractor to see, they are visible. That's the most important information. And um, as soon as we have that on our viewport, we also want to do to show our setting our table. So I'm just going to put in another viewport. I want a single one again. And I'm going to put it down here on the corner and you zoom 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 and you say regen again regenerate and now it looks better you come to the description one and i am going to make it one in a thousand it's too small one in 500 so the idea is um you let me just lock it oh this is where you lock and unlock your viewport the idea is you must your length of the length of your text must be uniform all throughout your drawing. So if you have agreed that all your drawing will have a length of maybe three, so it means all your text sizes must be three millimeters. So even this one, do you see at the moment is two point five? So which scale did I use? One in two fifty. 
So it means I can leave it at 2.5 because um, everything, it, all the text sizes on my drawing are um, uh, 2.5 millimeters. So um, you will have your setting out points. Um, you will also have to put in your north arrow, but normally these things are standardized. We don't want to have five drawings from the same company looking like they were done by five different companies. So you'd find that things like your North Arrow, your scale bar, your title block, um, they are made uniform. So before you start a drawing, you already know that for this project, this is the title block we are using. It already has maybe a key plan. If um, you need to put your key plan on the right-hand side or the left-hand top corner, those are some of the things that as a project um, team, you have to sit down and agree on that all our viewport are going to have a key plan on the top left corner we are going to have notes on the bottom left corner we are going to have our north arrow on the top right corner and we are going to have our scale bar at the bottom right corner so so that all your drawings looks uniform but yeah basically your topsoil strip drawing the information that it must have is the setting out points and also is the notes so if you read your sans 1200c you'll see what are the responsibilities of the contractor on site and what is it that you as the engineer you are supposed to do so chances are on the notes you're supposed to tell the contractor that uh, after you have uh, cleared and grabbed the side of the 300 mils let's say your topsoil um, strip was supposed to be 300 millimeters as soon as you have told him that he's supposed to clear and grab 300 millimeters you 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 give him directions to say uh do you stockpile the material or do you transport it off-site remember all of this comes back to be in our bill of quantities so as soon as you say stockpile is this much quantities it's there in the bill of quantities and he if he's supposed to find um a place just on the side and stock stockpile it there because you want to use it later that is also something that has to be communicated but if you want the material to be taken off site that is also something that needs to be communicated and you can put all those things on on the notes yeah so i hope this video has um taught you a thing or two about um your topsoil strip drawings and yeah, um, thank you so much for the support and always tuning in. And please, please, please comment and ask me questions or clarity if there's something that you don't understand. Because I'm also just, you know, trying to, <laughs> to speak in layman's terms so that I don't use a lot of technical knowledge. But I use a language that me and you can easily understand. And if it's not clear, um, you can go in the comment section and say I didn't understand one two and three and maybe I have to elaborate thank you so much bye